Welcome to my second Adobe Illustrator tutorial um, on how to use Adobe Illustrator to draft a pattern. Um, this follows from the previous tutorial which shows you how to use Illustrator to create your own men's shirt block um, using the tools available. This one, this tutorial deals mainly with the um, issue of how to put seam allowance onto what you've created. If you follow the previous tutorial, you should have something similar to what you're seeing on the screen now. Um, what I've done here, I've actually split the pattern pieces into four art boards. So you can see the um, sleeve, bodice block, collar and the cuff. Each particular section, as you can see in the layers panel, has an outline and numbers. So we'll go for the sleeve, we've got the numbers, we've got the outline. I've kept the numbers separate and I've kept them so if I want to alter any of the measurements then I've got reference points and keeping them separate means I've got a lot more flexibility in, in, uh, in my uh, adjustments and it's just a lot easier. If you follow the men's web generator which is available to download on the blog um, which looks like this you will notice that one centimetre seam allowance is included on the patterns apart from the collar where it's not included. The exact reason for this I don't know. Um, these are taken from the Winifred Al Aldridge books. Um, and in the book she does explain that in industry some designers use pattern uh, seam allowance on patterns, some don't. Why it's mixed on this I'm not really sure. Um, until I make this in, in Calico and try it, it'll probably become clear after that. What I'm going to show you is a method of um, on Illustrator on how to actually put seam allowance on which makes it pretty um, pretty easy. The other thing you've noticed on these, which is different to what um, what you probably have got, you've got the straighter grain, which I've added. The straighter grain tends to run 90 degrees parallel to the waist, um, unless you want to put it on a bias, which is 45 degrees. Um, if there's on a fold, then you don't need the straighter grain. So I've got a fold here, as you can see on the bodice. Um, the actual information in the middle of the panel, that's up to you what you put there. I've, I've put the measurements, um, the pattern piece, how many to cut, how much seam allowance is on, etc. You probably want to put the date on as well. The cuff, have a look at the cuff. I've actually placed, marked where I actually would like the um, buttonholes placing. The graphics I've um, added there, that's for the next tutorial, and that's how to place graphics in, in specific pattern piece areas which is going to be the next tutorial, so I'm just preparing there for the future. Um, and the same with the collar one there. As you can see on these pieces, I've actually put the seam allowance on. Now how you do the seam allowance is up to you, and I've seen many different ways. I've actually used a dotted line for the stitch line, and I've actually crossed the corners as well, as you can see here. Now some people have a solid line and they just finish at the corners. It's entirely up to you how you do that, but what you're looking for is an exact one centimetre line following your pattern. Now I've tried different ways of doing this by just selecting the object and shrinking it. Try and see if we can do it that way. It's not reliable. Give it a whirl and you'll see, see what I mean by that. So I'll show you the way that I've done it on the actual, uh, on this co uh, collar piece up here. Hopefully this will work. Right, so I'll go to my collar layer. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually turn the numbers invisible so you I'm sorry so you don't see those. There it is. I'm gonna unlock the outline to see right. I'm gonna work on this top one. Okay, so collar outline. <coughs> now this one said there's no seam allowance added. Um so you can imagine this outline this is your the edge of your pattern piece now if seam allowance was included then your stitch line would be on the inside of that line a centimeter running along here all the way around because this isn't included then the seam allowance would be on the outside so you'll add one centimeter um, and it's not a problem. I put no seam allowance here. Once I put the seam allowance on, I'll probably change that to one centimetre. 
what you have to do first is make sure that the, that is actually one continuous outline and as you can see at the moment it isn't because you can see I've clicked with the selection tool and you've got this box click here you've got another box it's made up of two objects I'm going to link them together and I'm going to do that I'll zoom in here so you can see the anchor point there. I'm going to get the direct selection tool highlight over that right click make sure they're both selected right click join We'll zoom out again, Let's see if that works. Sometimes there's a bit of trial and error until you've got all of them. Get the selection tool, click. Okay, it's still another one that needs to do, and I'm going to do this one here. Basically, just marquee over the two selection points, the anchor points, join them together. Now, let's have a look. And you can see the, the pink line goes all the way around the edge, which is what we're after. It's one object now. Right, we're going to do use the pen tool and I'm just going to draw, I'm going to hold shift down so it constrains it to the um, horizontal and draw one line. I'm going to select it, object transform, move and I'm going to move it, preview on, move it one centimeter, you can see it will move down so I'm going to press copy. And this time I'm going to go object transform again. And then we have three lines. Marquee over that and then click here in the brushes palette. And if yours isn't open, go to window brushes up here. Click on new brush. It's down the bottom near the little bin. What you need to uh, select is art brush and OK. Now I'm using um, Illustrator CS5, so this might be slightly different depending on which version you're using. I'm going to make sure stretch to fit stroke length is selected and either the direction left or right, that's what you're after, it doesn't really matter. Click OK and you see what's appeared here is a new brush. I'm going to select my outline and I'm going to click my new brush and as you can see it's put a line on the inside and outside. If I just undo that, so this is my line there and if you watch carefully again it's put a line either side of that. Now because we said no seam allowance was included we need to add it so we want the outside one and that one we don't need this one here. If I click on that you can't it's still all one so the way around that is actually object expand appearance so now these are separate. If I click on it it selects them all again it's because it's grouped so object ungroup. Now if I click on it it's only selected that inner one, so I'll hit backspace, it's deleted. So I've got the outside one and the one I'm after. I'm going to select, select the inside one, that's my stitch line. I turn it into a dash line. So that's in the stroke options here. Dash, I'm just going to put six and six space in. Click off there. So now you can see my seam allowance is added and I've got my dash. Now it still needs cleaning up. As you can see here, and the corners are missing. And also here, you notice on the centre fold, we've got we don't need the seam allowance, so we need to get rid of that. And your notches are no longer where they should be. So let's move that so it's a bit more central. So this is a mixture of the direct selection tool and the scissors. And the scissors can be found behind the rubber. So there it is, the scissors tool. What I'm going to do first. I'm going to start here. On this corner, I'm going to get the scissors. If I get the direct selection tool and try moving this anchor point, you can see it alters the whole line, and I don't want that. So I'm going to undo it. The way I do this is by getting the scissors, clicking just a single click on the line where I want it to be cut. Then with the direct selection tool, I select this anchor point, delete, delete again. So it's disappeared. If I now click on this anchor point and then drag it, hold down shift to keep it vertical, it stretches it out. This one I'm going to hold shift again, just stretch it to meet that line. Alright, I'm going to do the same at the bottom. So again, scissors, click there, click there, direct selection tool, anchor point, delete, delete. This anchor point, click and hold and drag it, 
Oops, hold the shift down. This one, drag it, hold the shift down, and then turn. So now if I click this line, select this line with the selection tool, I'm going to get rid of the dash line. It's a solid line. You don't add seam allowance on the center fold. Now I need to get rid of this line. I'm going to do exactly the same way. I'm just going to click here, scroll down, select, click here. And then I'm going to select the, select the direct selection tool, click the anchor points, delete, delete. The bits that stick out, I'm just going to literally just drag the anchor point. Okay, so now that will be on the edge of the fabric. These are in the wrong place. So I get the selection tool. I'm just going to click, drag, hold the shift to keep it vertical. It's a bit smaller than the one centimeter. Some people have it 0.5, some have it one. If you want it one centimeter, just direct selection tool. Click the anchor point and drag. Just gonna lower this. The SS is shoulder seam. I'm gonna do the same with this one. This bit here, here, well, I can simply do here is just the direct selection tool, just grab this anchor point, move it back. With this one, because it's on a curve, I'm just going to cut it just so it's a bit shorter. Select, select the anchor point, delete them, and then I'm just going to move this one in a bit. Just clean that one up. Here, just going to delete these, don't need these ones anymore. I'm going to do here, I'm going to cut these. I want this is too much here for me. Again, it depends on how you, you work. I'm going to cut so I could do the other ones, cut there and there. Select the anchor point, delete. I'm just going to continue dragging this without distorting the line. And the same with this one. Try and keep it a centimetre as best you can. And then I'm going to join those two together with a pen tool. Get rid of the dash and strokes. I'm just going to chop that corner off. So again, the scissors here, here. Select that. Direct selection tool. Okay, if you want to put a circle there, you can do, and there, and on the corners, it's entirely up to you. You should end up with something like that, which is pretty, pretty straightforward to do. Um, on the more comp on the more complicated panel pieces, you might have to do a bit more clearing up, um, particularly around the armholes. It, it, sometimes um, it's it's not too clearing and what you do so you're just going to have to play around with the scissors and the selection tools by the time you've done all this you'll be really proficient at Adobe Illustrator and once you've done this block pattern then you know you can make it up in Calico get the fit right and then alter it and you've got a basic block based on your own measurements and that's it um, don't think there's anything else you need to be aware of um, and Keep an eye out for the next tutorial where I'll be actually placing graphics in, in certain panel pieces. And bear in mind this is 100% scale, so it's a really, really good way of actually pattern cutting um, if you're limited space and resources and you've got Adobe Illustrator. Thank you.